going on, guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Evil Eddie, and we got some fun stuff set up for everybody. We are now on day two, well, part two of the MMA trivia that we are going to be doing here at pureevilmma.com. I want to thank everybody that's tuning in. Make sure to subscribe down below here on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're tuning in right now. We got a special guest joining us as well who's actually going to be competing against last night's or Tuesday night's opponent who works over at pureevilmma.com, known as Dar Smokes, a.k.a. Ray from Ray's Oma Plata Soup. We got the man. The myth. We got Rhino, who's actually another podcaster. What's going on, Rhino? How you doing, my guy? We're doing great, my man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So you're over in Dublin right now. You're over. You're overseas, correct? Incorrect. I think you're thinking of Irish Jake. I'm. Uh, I'm in Michigan. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. So I'm going to be asking you about 10, 13 questions. We did 13 questions with Dars. So we're going to do about 13 questions with you before losing his title to Chris Weidman. Who did Anderson Silva last beat? Was it A, Luke Rockhold, B, Michael Bisbing, C, C, Chris Lieben, or uh, D, Stefan Bonner? Uh, I'm going to go with D, Stefan Bonner, final answer. And that's correct. There you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. What season of The Ultimate Fighter did TJ Dillashaw appear on as a young buck? Is that multiple choice? <laughs> yeah, multiple choice. Hold on. All right. Is it A, Ultimate Fighter Season 22, B, Ultimate Fighter Season 19, C, Ultimate Season 15, or D, Ultimate Fighter Season 15? Um, ah, uh, geez. The, the 14 and 15 are so close, and it's one of those two, I think. So uh, I'm just going to take a stab and say it was 14. C, final answer. And the coaches were actually Bisbing and Mayhem Miller. And that is correct. And yeah. the finale was uh, actually pretty interesting. Ultimate Fighter Season 14 had a lot of young bucks on there. Like um, the entire fucking thing. Dodson on there beating Dillashaw was pretty interesting. Right. I mean, it's just sad what happened to TJ later on in his career. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing the next chapter. I want to see what he comes back like the. There's a whole lot of fun to be had at 35, and I think he can get right into the mix. And you know, you can feel it whatever way you feel about him, but he's a he's a dynamic guy to watch in the cage, and that's what's most important to me. So it's sad uh, though, man. It's it's sad because I feel like he was such a good guy for so long until that thing happened with <coughs> Team Alpha Male. That's when shit kind of hit the fan. There's very few gyms that remain at the top, uh, successful for long periods of time, which is why. You know, things like like Alpha Male had the big exodus, the Black Zillions. I thought we're going to be a phenomenal gym for 20 years. You know what I mean? So it's really hard to keep a high level gym with high level guys all on the same page. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, people don't realize when you're in the moment, you really got to appreciate things like that. Like 2015, 2016, those are amazing years that we had there. A lot 100%. of excitement, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So hopefully this next decade will be just as fun. All right, man, you are on a roll right now, three for three, and my phone's yes, finally fucking working now, so thank God. <laughs> Good, yeah, right. All right, so what year was Bellator MMA founded? Was it A, 2008, B, 2010, C, 2005, or D, 2007? Um, I'm just going to be B or D. I'm going to go with B, Bellator 2010. And that is, are, are you positive? That's just that's what I think the strongest of. No, I am not positive, but that's what I, that's my guess. Now, is B. B before you say that as your final answer, why why do you think that? Like, think back in your mind of because I remember I remember whenever Strike Force kind of stopped is when I started we started hearing about Bellator, and I want to say Strike Force was winding down in the 2010 range because Scott so Coker that, was over there. Yeah, right, right. That's why I'm, that's why I'm going with uh, 2010, and that answer is incorrect the correct answer is a 2008 but that's an easy one to kind of mess up because it, the whole bjorn rebney era and all that it's just sure a, a clusterfuck so you got one wrong and three correct here so next okay. question at ufc 154 gsp defeated what ufc champion in a unification bout was it a carlos condit B, Jake Shields, C, Josh Koscheck, or D, Johnny Hendricks? 
UFC 154. You said for a unification bout, that being the predecessor being that a interim title. Exactly. Had to have been on the, all right, so I got to go with Carlos Condit. Got it, final, man. Got it. Answer. Look at you, yes, bro. I'm yes, fucking sir. killing this shit, bro. <laughs> you know, I love doing this because it's interesting for people in their car on the way to work or at the gym. But, man, you're just like, this is too easy for you right now, Ryan. No, no, I'm not getting cocky. Trust me. <laughs> shit can always take a hard left turn. <laughs> All right. So this is this is a pretty uh, <laughs> difficult one, but I, f- I have a feeling that you're going to get this one. All right. All right. Next question. Who holds the record? For most takedowns in UFC light heavyweight history, A, John Jones, B, Tito Ortiz, C, Rafael Natal, or D, Randy Couture. Pretty easy with the uh, multiple choice there, I believe. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, jeez, I'm good. I, I want to say, I want to say Tito, but then um, Randy is also on my mind. But then again, Randy did a lot more uh, up against the cage, dirty boxing, than actual takedowns. So I'm going to stick with Tito Ortiz B is my answer. Tito Ortiz. And that's correct, man. Got another one. Another one. It's it's a little sad looking back at this decade because UFC has really erased Tito Ortiz from uh, everything it feels. I Well, dude, it's it it's all stems from the beef between him and Dana. It's got to. <laughs> Dana's know? his bitch, apparently. Remember that T-shirt? <laughs> I do remember that T-shirt. And I, rem- I was reminded of it again. I had that 30 for 30, which was fucking brilliant. Him and Chuck and Tito 30 for 30. Box. Remember that? Yeah, and then Tito even said that he's the one who bailed out on it for whatever reasons. I don't know. <laughs> it would have been pretty funny to look back on now, though. It's just sad to see, uh, you know, the last couple of years with Tito and then that last fight with Chuck Liddell. <coughs> that was, you know, the Chuck fight was hard to watch this year. That was crazy yeah, moment the, of 2019. Yeah, that was, that was rough. I hate seeing it. And Chuck's one of my top two or three all-time favorite fighters. So, yeah, to see him get like that was was pretty hard to watch you're right what about this last fight that tito had too over at uh combate yeah combate americas against alberto del rio um you know alberto again is was north of well north of 40 and hadn't fought since the pride day so it was a pretty long time tito was far more uh had far less rust on him he looked great but you know let's be honest alberto is not a current mma fighter so We'll have to wait and see what happens next. I like, I really do. I like Combate Americas. I like what they're doing. I like that they got this uh, Access TV deal. So yeah, that's I'm able big. to watch them on Friday nights because I was a big LFA guy. Hell yeah, so, bro. Yeah. So with the LFA going away, that was my Friday night fight watch. And so now with Combate, this year of 2020 is going to be filling in. I think Campbell said that they're going to have like 30 live events or something on, on Access this year. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's all. Yeah, they had Lion Fight for a while. E- even the Fight Network. <laughs> yeah. I-, I miss watching the Fight Network as well. That was uh, a huge thing. Man, Alberto Dorito is a legend for one reason in my mind. The porn tape that he did with uh, the WWE chick, the goth girl page. I heard, yeah, I heard about it, but I never saw any, any of that stuff. So for listeners that never seen it or heard about it, he literally comes on the world title with the title under this girl's chin, Paige. Uh, from the WWE, the goth girl. I forgot her uh, forgot her real name. But he comes on the belt. Like, it's just, it's so cringy. And they tried covering it up on the reality show, saying that she got busted for uh, weed in her system. So it's just, it, that's just hilarious. So, we got another one right, man. Only one wrong. So, moving forward, back at UFC 160. Habib set the record for most takedowns in a single fight, landing a total of how many takedowns? A, 16. B, 21, C, 19, or D, 14? Fuck, out of jeez. I'm going to say 21, B, final answer. Now, why, why do you say that? Because that's Cause fucking it's the highest, high number. It, yeah, because it's the highest number, and I, I feel like there's been lots of guys who – so if you've got a – let's just say you have a three-round fight and you take the guy down, you know, a lot of guys have taken a guy down four or five times in a round. Just be, you know, just it's happened a lot over the time. So I just wanted, I was going to go with the highest number. So I'm sticking with 21 is my final answer. And that's correct, man. That was sure. a crazy fight, too. That was a. Yeah. Remember the Glacian T Bow fight? Or I do. Yeah, Glacian T Bow. That yes, was. I do. That was crazy, man. And 
<laughs> Before we move on to the next question, Habib versus Tony, who you got for that one? Well, oh, I'm not going to let through. that. I'm not letting that go now, man. I'm going to do a whole show about that fight. Well, I can't let go of my predictions on that one. Evil it, Eddie? It, you know what's going to happen, bro? It's booked in April again, and it's going to fall through. It's an April Fool's joke again. That's what's <laughs> no going to happen. Do I just say it all depends on how well we treat the MMA gods? Yeah. <laughs> See, if, they, if they smile upon us and let this fight finally happen. They were good to us last year, man. We didn't have any main events besides the whole John Jones uprooting and changing <laughs> uh, venues, but pretty good You're last right. year with nothing really Yeah, it was good. Through. You're right. You're right. So you are on a roll, man. You only got a couple more questions left. Next question. What is Dana White's middle name? Is it A, Frederick, B, Anthony, C, Patrick, or D, Michael? So is it Dana Frederick White? Dana Anthony White, Dana Patrick White, which would be crazy, or Dana Michael White. Dana Michael White sounds like a pop star. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what was the the first one? Was the first two? It's one of the first two. Uh, and I'm gonna eliminate that for you. That's correct. So it's between it's one A of the and first B. Two. Is it Dana Frederick White or Dana Anthony White? Oh man, um, I'll just take a stab and say it's it's Frederick Dana Frederick White. Why are you going with that one? It's more obscure than the other one, so I figured it wouldn't be a, probably a trivia question if they had a super easy one. I don't know. I'm just going to go with obscureness, so I'm going to go with Frederick. Got it. Nailed it. Yeah. That's Sir? such a crazy middle name, too. Dana Frederick. Know. Like, why not name him Fred Dana? Like, You know what I mean? Like, there was a skit. I don't know, man. He, he hates his mom. I know that. They have oh, a yeah. Very, they have a terrible relationship, so maybe this, maybe that was the beginning of it. Maybe that was the genesis of his dislike for his mom was that she middle named him Frederick. Who knows? She came out with like a book or something, and then recently said that he was cheating on his wife. And then you know the Colby Covington video came out where he's in the casino and Dana's with that uh, showgirl, and she gets yeah. up and walks away. Just uh, yeah. she got him good from 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 the get go, naming him Frederick. <laughs> So that, only uh, only only Eminem and Dana White have I ever heard that <laughs> have that kind of relationship with their mother. It's, it's crazy to see. It really is, man. Um, next question. So you really need to get all these wrong to uh, really screw this up. <laughs> no pressure. Who has had the most fights inside the UFC? Is it A. Cowboy, B. Frank Mir, C. Frankie Edgar, or D. Joe Lozon? Uh, I know Cowboy has the most wins, so I'm going to give him the edge and say he's had the most fights. So I'm going with uh, A, Cowboy Cerrone, final answer. And that is incorrect. It is Frank uh, Mir. Okay. I think it's like 27 or 28 fights that he's had. Yeah, I, I did know that Cowboy had the most wins, so that's why I went with that one. That was my thought process behind it. That's why I threw it in there, because I feel like everyone would go right to that, because it's yeah so close. All right, so you got two wrong. Uh, if you screw this one up, you're tied. So, right. what was the first UFC event to introduce weight classes? Was it A, UFC 6, B, UFC 8, C, UFC 12, or D, UFC 4? <sighs> Fuck. Of course, you're going way, way back. Uh, I had weight classes... UFC 6, UFC 8, UFC 12, and then what? And then UFC 4. I'm going to go with... Oh, jeez. Well, well think about, about this. Think about this. There was a big thing all over the news of people saying it was human cockfighting. They had to do something. Uh, you, had, you had Big John trying to put rules in place and make everything more professional. So... <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I recall the era. It's just what was which one was the one uh, that they put in weight classes. I, I'll just go. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with twelve. I'm just gonna go with the highest number. Twelve is the highest number, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna go with twelve. I just. I'm unsure. It's between eight and twelve for me, so I'm gonna go with twelve. This might help you a little bit too. It also introduced the banning of fish hooking. Um, you're correct. UFC 12. Got yeah, it. Yeah, I thought it was 12, yeah. I'm trying to remember who headlined that event. Let me look that up really quick for everybody. Sure. UFC sure. 12 was Mark Coleman versus Dan Severn. Oh, the beast from right here in Michigan, from Coldwater, Michigan, about an hour from where I live. 
round one, two minute and 57 seconds. Also on the card, Vitor Belfort with the first round KO, 43 seconds. A young Vitor. Yeah. Vitor Blitz, bro. <laughs> wow, we've all seen him. We've all seen him do that to uh, the Axe Murder so many times, dude, the Vitor Blitz. Holy shit. Look, okay. Let me go. Th this is crazy. All these fights are first round finishes. Mark Coleman, round one. Uh, Vitor Belfort, round one, 43 seconds. Uh, uh, Jerry Bullender, 39 oh, seconds yeah. of round one. Vitor he Belfort, round one, one minute and 17 seconds. Scott Ferrozo, round one, eight minutes and two seconds. Uh, Kuzo Taku uh, Taka Takashi, three minutes of round two. Jerry Bullender, round one. Uh, Justin Martin, 14 seconds of round one and nick sanzo round one ko submission submission i mean damn man i want to go back and rewatch that shit that must have been crazy. yeah it'll, it'll only it'll only take you about a half an hour to watch the whole thing it sounds like <laughs> 1997 <laughs> you in 1997 <coughs> that would be my senior year of high school oh damn man really yeah i know i look younger than i am but i'm 40. tell us how you got introduced to uh ufc then because um i know the exact day i know the exact story i know everything hell yeah that. The quick version is, um, it would have been in 93. It would have been at Blockbuster Video. Same here, looking, dude. <laughs> looking for looking for pro wrestling videos. I dude, wrestling. same here. Yep. And, and you ran out of wrestling. them, right? <laughs> it wasn't that. It was that I saw the I saw the blood on the one guy. I'm like, oh, I don't. Because I watched both WWF and NWA ECW and all that. Yeah. Well, it, well, ECW wasn't on my radar yet. I don't think it was out in stores either. But they At started doing more gonna... of that backyard brawly video releases. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And so I saw I saw the bloody uh, the sumo guy who uh, the French savant guy kicked in the face. Oh, he got his, his tooth, tooth knocked out. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I saw his picture on the on on it, and so I was like, I gotta get this. So I picked it up and. From that point on, I was absolutely hooked. Um, First fight in UFC history, right there, too. Right, and he fucking went to went down, and he got a full kick to the face. His tooth went forever into the fifth row, or whatever it was. So yeah, that was my that was my first uh, first time into watching MMA, and I knew from that point on that was what I wanted to watch every possible moment of every day. I had that same experience, and then a couple of years ago, I was covering Bellator on Press Row, and I got my dad and little sister tickets. Afterwards, I introduced my father to uh, Hoist Gracie, and man, he would not shut up about it. He was so proud. It was like a moment where my dad was actually finally proud, like school, sports, this and that. Never proud. That moment, he was proud because me and him watched UFC 1 on VHS, sure. and then here I was introducing him to Hoist. And, uh, That's pretty outstanding, man. And it was it was such a great moment. So uh, yeah, that's very cool. Hell yeah! Shout out to Blockbuster. There's nothing better than going and picking out a video like that, dude. Right? Like like you want to talk about your the best time in your life from the time you're like eight to about like twelve or thirteen. And you discover chicks. Like <laughs> getting having a buddy spend the night going and getting a movie and like a Super Nintendo game. The anticipation a, of it all. <laughs> oh, yeah. dude. It was, I mean, it just didn't get better than that. That was the pinnacle of fun for that time of your life. And God, yeah, shout out. Shout out to Blockbuster. Kids today don't know about that shit, dude. You couldn't just hit a button on your fucking remote and get any movie you ever made on your uh, on your TV. You had to go and you had to look. You had to put in the work, bro. You had to work, put in the time and the effort. And it made it more special. Like it, it 100%. Was more sentimental, you know what I mean? <coughs> I would go to Absolutely. my dad's house on the weekend in the city, and that was our thing. You know what I mean? Like Nowadays, you sit on the couch and what do you want to watch? No, no, no. Right, right. Come on, get out of here. First no, time I, mean, I smoked weed. Best. First time I smoked weed with my dad, uh, we went to Tommy K's. I went inside. I got back in the car, and he goes, your fucking stepmother. Look what she left in the ashtray. I'm looking in the ashtray. I'm like, what? He's like, look look what she left there. I'm like, what? I don't see it. He's like, there's a fucking joint in there. Fucking light that shit up. I was like, oh, shit. I ended up throwing up all night, too. I got all <laughs> fucked up from that shit. That's all right. Next question. Final question. Uh, okay. But when, I'm already I'm I already beat Uma Plata though, right? Yeah, you're you're in you're All in the right. game. You're in the game. But uh we gotta do this for good measure to see who got the most correct out of everybody. I got well. you, I got you, bud. When did UFC Fight Pass launch? Is it A, two thousand thirteen, B, two thousand fourteen, C, two thousand fifteen, or D, two thousand and twelve? I'm gonna go with the most recent, I'm gonna say two thousand and fifteen. Um, I don't know for sure. But that's what I'm going with. That's what I feel. So 2015 final answer. 
why do you why do you say 2015? Just because just cause it's, it's the most recent. You know what I mean? It's just the most it's the most recent number, and I don't feel like it was that long ago. I mean, it could be it could be one of the other numbers, but I'm sticking with I'm sticking with 2015. Uh, incorrect. 2013. I would have okay. picked 2015 as well because that's when they started actually promoting it. <laughs> right. Right. That must have. Yeah. That's definitely. You know. Again, when I when I saw that, I thought it was just going to be um, other. MMA content and like, you know, like the countdown specials and whatnot. But then when they started having fight pass only cards, like actual UFC cards that you could only get on fight pass, I knew the, it was the beginning of the end for all the content being on free TV and pay-per-view. You know what I mean? I knew streaming was coming down the pipe, you know what I'm saying? For lack of a better term. So yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of having to get all, you know, having to get to zone and, Having to get UFC fight pass and it's expensive. Plus. Yeah, it's it's it just it's too much, dude. So, yeah, I did that. So yeah, I have no problem not knowing that one because I I won't subscribe to that shit ever. Now, let, let me ask you this: How much longer do you think fight pass is gonna last for? I mean, they do have the whole it's on there. Uh, there's still promotions in there, but it's just so. It's just too much. Then you got yeah, the zone, full do, combat, all that. Yeah, the, what they should do is they should they should fold it into your ESPN Plus package. So for another, you know, ninety nine cents. Not even fuck that, dude. Just leave it as it is. But just fight pass, fold it into. So when you get ESPN Plus, not only do you get the ESPN Plus content, but you get the entire fight library that, that Fight Pass has. I agree. That's the way they should do it because it's gonna fucking fade away. You may as well give the fucking ESPN Plus people give what the they fans want. what they want, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's enough. There's enough revenue coming in already for that company to spare a little bit of the fan for the fans. So now, before we let you go, I had a quick idea. The whole pay per view thing. They dollars right why don't they allow us to just buy the co-main and main event for like 20 bucks you know what i mean like I, i'd rather <coughs> have that option open you know i've never i've never i've never heard it discussed where it would just be the co-main and main i've heard people say um where you, you they wanted to get like let's say pick five fights out of the 12 or whatever you know what i mean and then you know, you could you could do it that way. I, I never really saw it being the co-main and main. I would love it. I love that idea. I think that would be fantastic. Uh, 50, like I was thinking more like fifteen ninety nine. Yeah. You're right. It would, it would probably be more like twenty bucks for the co-main and main event. I think that's a great idea, and I'm for it, dude. Just look at the numbers that have been coming out lately. Even Bellator uh, had an awful year, man. Every year it's going down and down, and it's it's just sad to see. And it's because there's so much confusion. And it's yeah. just so much money. So let us know what you guys think. And Rhino, great job, man. You're in the finale. So All now right. you have a chance at the $50 gift certificate. Uh, the next show will be on Tuesday. So hopefully you'll be able to catch us on Tuesday. Even if we got to pre-record it, uh, we can do that as well. Even Monday if we got to pre-record it. But it will be released on Tuesday, even Sunday. Whatever day you're free uh, by Tuesday night, uh, we'll, we'll get that done. But you're in the finale in the runnings for a $15 gift card of whatever you want, whether it's Hooters, Amazon, Google, anything you want, uh, you are now in the running for that. So, Rhino, what we like to do at this point, we give you the imaginary microphone. If you got any tags, shout-outs, uh, where people could find your show, uh, what content you are going through in 2020, the floor is now all yours. Oh, uh, thanks so much, Yvaletti. Yeah, once again, this is uh, Rhino from Combat Sports with Rhino, at Com Sports with Rhino on Twitter. Uh, we are on Spotify. We are on Anchor, Combat Sports with Rhino. Your all-encompassing podcast for not only mixed martial arts, which we do a lion's share of, but we definitely cover boxing content, Muay Thai, kickboxing, pretty much just glory uh, kickboxing. But yeah, we've got all kinds of combat sports covered. I've got a beautiful, wonderful uh, Twitter question reader named Bailey that everybody loves. And uh, yeah, man, check, check us out. I release it every Sunday on Twitter. So just check out my Twitter page, Com Sports. Um, with rhino and uh we'd love to have you guys be a part of the scene man we love you guys everyone needs to help one another out that's what i want 2020 to be and you're actually you forgot to mention uh tenure heavyweight pro boxer yep well. i was a yep i was a pro boxer for uh, over 10 years three years of the amateurs before that so uh i'm not sure if that part of my life is over yet i'm 
I'm still mulling it over. If I do uh, have another one, maybe it'd be one or two more within the next year, year and a half, and then for sure be done. But I might be done already, where I'm not sure. You know what I mean? There's a there's a lot of things to kind of weigh got, and consider on that. You know. Got reservations. We know you do. Every fighter does. <laughs> and especially after 10 years of getting punched in the head. You know yeah, I mean? you gotta, yeah. You got to think of quality of life down the road. But yeah, I'm not sure, man. Sometimes. Uh, Sometimes I'm in that gym, bro, and I feel like, God, I feel good. I really want to do this again. And then sometimes I'm, I wake up in the morning before I go to work. I'm like, God dang, everything fucking hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a real, you know, it's a real back and forth. We'll see what happens. Well, uh, man, I'm really impressed with the knowledge that you got. So we will have the link for your podcast down below for everybody to go down there and subscribe. And make sure to give them a follow on Twitter at C-O-M-S-P-O-R-T-S-W-R-H-I-N-O. Thank you so much, my friend. We'll talk to you later, Evil Eddie. Behave yourself. Peace. Sit right there with the, the, the trivia. I am blown away by that. I thought some of those questions were pretty hard. And even the ones he wasn't sure with, like the Dana White, what's Dana White's middle name? Who else would have picked Frederick? Dana Frederick White? I mean... Man, I'm really impressed. I'm interested to go check out his podcast. He's now in the finals. Um, but actually, I, you know what I just realized is that we still have one more guy. Well, we got two more guys to go through. But uh, we still got Juice, who's supposed to come on tonight as well. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to get a little Juice right now. And I, I'm guessing around seven, six or seven, he said that he was going to be coming on. So if you're listening to this and it's not live... I'm probably going to blend it in right after this, so stay tuned. And I'm Evil Eddie from Pure Evil MMA, pureevilmma.com for all the latest MMA news and interviews. Remember, without evil, there's no purity. White knuckles till the end. Leave yourselves.